First of all, advertising pretty much doesn't work. It once did. When I was a kid, there were three networks on television. They calculated that the more times you saw Pepsi, the more likely you were to buy Pepsi. That is just not true today. We have this incredible device in our home, the most powerful device in our home, is not the computer, it's not the television, it's not the telephone, it's the remote. That's the power. We are the editor. The average male changes the remote every 27 seconds. The average female every minute and a quarter. <coughs> and you know what's being remoted out, the commercials. It's fascinating to me that the advertising agencies never do a study of the use of the remote. You've never read one. Some of them are funny right now, and funny works. Oh, it's a very interesting, though, that funny works, but it doesn't necessarily make me do anything. The best example, which wasn't funny, Intel Inside, $270 million advertising campaign. We all know Intel Inside. Two news reporters, local San Francisco reporters, went to Fry's and stood outside, and as people walked out with a box, they said, is Intel Inside? Nobody knew. Literally nobody. The, the, the advertising effect was zero in terms of consumer purchase. Well, that's got Intel inside. I'm going to buy that. Now, it may have affected Wall Street. That's another story. And we can talk about that some other time. But there was $250, $270 million. It didn't do much. Let's be honest about the World Wide Web for a minute, since we're having lunch. And it is a great, I love the spot, love the lunch. You're a very interesting group of people. The World Wide Web is a thoroughly unemotional medium. It affects no one emotionally. Maybe if your mother-in-law has cancer and you want to find out about cancer, you can find out about cancer on the World Wide Web. But without sound, which is the predominant power of television, and even in the movie theater, if you take away the sound and just run the movie, you'd be amazed at how you know the, the most powerful large screen film doesn't affect you. Without sound, without motion picture, without a face that speaks to you, words on a page have the impact, uh, give you an example, the Wall Street Journal, when I was flying east last week, read by a group of men and a few women sitting in the upgraded um, mileage plus section. That is the Wall, the Wall Street Journal being read. How many offices have you seen that have this pile of stuff that I ask this kind of innocent boyish question, um, are you going to get to that? And the answer is, of course, no. What, are you kidding? And they open up a, a closet that has an additional pile of unread from the last month or two material. We're overloaded. The other way to pitch, by the way, is what caused most of the BC world to be so dedicatedly wrong. sense. <laughs> 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 is worth a thousand words. What picture is critical? What picture is critical? Your product doesn't mean anything. Nobody cares. What the result of that product is, to me, as a person in France or in Russia, really matters. Communication is about what I say and what you hear, not about what I say. I can say to you, I am the greatest marketing communications person alive today. And you can hear, that man is a braggart. I have not communicated with you, have I? Mar communication is about what I say and what you hear. What you hear is based on what you already think before I ever try to reach you. My first big bullet is make certain you speak to people on the World Wide Web about yourself, about the personal world you're in to attract them, not about the business, because it doesn't attract them. There's too much out there. There's too much stuff. I saw a website, and I try and find this for anyone who emails me, where the guy only had questions on his website. That was brilliant. You go to the website, the first thing you see is, uh, do you know anything about um, electromagnetic fields? It has nothing to do with it. Initially, you think, what he's talking about. What? Why do I need to buy anything? Yes or no? No. <laughs> uh, do you want to? No. And his third slide was, and you're the right person. <laughs> I worked for United Technologies. I worked on Pratt & Whitney engines. And I said, it's not about engines. It's not about airplanes. 
It's about people going to see a relative or doing business or a child going to see a parent in a divorce situation. And that's the stories I told. In AT&T, it's about reaching out and touching someone, not about the telephone. There is a great lesson in Drive Time Radio. I'd like everybody to take it away. That is, they get you when they start with a question in sound that hits what you care about. Do you need a mortgage? Well, if you need a mortgage, and somebody says on the radio, do you need a mortgage? It is amazing. All of a sudden, I hear that. The second I got the mortgage, the week I got the mortgage, they stopped running those ads. <laughs> I don't know how that could happen, but it did. Here's one of my mentors, best radio ad of the 26,000 this guy did. He really did the 26,000. He is. Are you listening to me? That was his best ad he ever did. That was the opening of an ad. The guy who makes the screw that holds the gear to the bottom of my car saves my life. He doesn't make a screw. He doesn't make a gear. He doesn't make a car. He saves my life because that gear mechanism drives that car that I drive that protects me and allows me to get to work. It allows me to feed my family. It takes me to the mountains. That screw does that. Now when you go to the business, if you can find ways to connect the personal messages of your, whatever you're saying, to the business messages, you've really made what I would call really excellent positioning. Uh, off the book of marketing on positioning, it says, a position is a clear, concise summary of the product. That is not a position. That's a fact, I guess. A position is, what place am I in? that will influence you to feel how I want you to feel. That is a position. It may have nothing to do with your product, may relate to your product or service. You may be right on the money. You may be really solving somebody's pain point. When you are, the person is interested. How do you get heard? How do you have values that are heard? How do you get the audience to take you seriously and act on what feel what you've said and act on it. I say the key word is credibility. Much of what we all see is not credible to us. All that I've been talking about, all those vision, uh, uh, where your partner, uh, customer service, are really issues of credibility. If, you, we don't, if we don't believe you, Mr. Marketer, Ms. Marketer, then you cannot get to us, no matter what you say. You've got to find a way to be credible. One of the ways I keep credibility, because it is a problem, is a heavy use of third parties. Heavy use of third parties. Everybody's got them on their website, a little quote from the customer. I'd like to have video, I'd like to have still, I'd like to have audio, if not video. I'd like to have a number to call, because I think third parties really help. Go call him. Go see him. See what that guy says about me. Credible third parties have tremendous power, and I look everywhere whenever I'm doing marketing communication for who can speak my case better than me. Now when you speak my case or I speak my case, what do you do? I say you tell stories and there's some very good research on this. Uh, here's a, Susan Stein, the editor of the Harvard Communications Update, which is a great newsletter. She says, a company's bitter ability to deliver its message and reach investors, prospects, customers and the media depends on stories often told by third-party independents. Stories really have power. Um, companies have to connect to stories. Products have to connect to stories larger than themselves. I wrote down a few notes about what I think credible messages are all about, being believable. First of all, they're simple. The listener has to understand them quick. If I've got to spend more than 24 seconds understanding you, I've, you've lost me. Meaningless term, easy to use. What does that mean? Since everybody says it, it doesn't mean anything. World class. No, I'm not world class. I'm trying to get to be world class. I'm sort of nation class or I'm continent class. Customer service. Customer service is an oxymoron. It wasn't when I was a boy. It wasn't when he was a boy. But it is today. There is no such thing. Customer service is like the government saying, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Does anybody believe that? Uh, solution provider. What's a solution provider? Everybody's a solution provider. You can see business writing is terrible because it doesn't speak to people. 
These are words that I'm taking right out of marketing brochures. Here's one from the head of a brochure. With vision and commitment to the highest standards of professionalism, we achieve leadership in the security service industry. Does anybody believe that? Here's another one. We do this by having a talented and motivated team who offer our customers competitive services and products. This is yawn material. They are our partner. And you see AT&T logo, IBM logo, um, uh, a Cisco logo in some little startup, and they call themselves partner. We know what that means. They either are about to buy you or they are ignoring you. But Cisco is not a partner of 99% of the people who say they are. Say to yourself, how many words can I take out of it? Do I have a graphic that doesn't mean anything? Have I depersonalized this place so much that I don't even have, that, that anyone looking at it has no sense of who I am, who my company is, what matters to people? Have I depersonalized? And, and then, have I removed the essential meaning of what I'm doing? So that all I'm about is the little details that a business person asks me, which doesn't work on the World Wide Web. It really doesn't. I ask you to look at camcorders, which is an area I know a lot about. Between Canon and JVC and Sony, you can't read the differences between them. And they spend a third of the time on their websites, multi-billion dollar corporations, pitching me on how many megapixels? Does anybody really know? You could be communicating A, and I could be hearing D, as you know. So the trick is to attach, know your audience, attach your messages to the audience's concerns, cross them so that the audience hears you, put something into the message that motivates the audience to take an action. I'll give you a really good example from a, another professional friend of mine. He, got, he does radio advertising, and he's a good positioning guy. And he got called by a furniture manufacturer, of, sorry, retailer in Springfield, Massachusetts, who had six stores, the biggest guy in the area in Massachusetts. And this guy said, look, my daughter was raped. And the police treated my daughter fabulously well. And I've done all this advertising over the years. I want to do something for the police. Will you help me? So my friend made three minute-long radio commercials that honored the police of Springfield. They had real cops talking, and his daughter is talked on the radio ad. And at the very end, his wife, the furniture owner, store owner's wife, says, um, thank you. That's it. And it just says, thank you, a Springfield Furniture. And their sales, as you can, no surprise to you by what I'm saying, quadrupled. Had nothing to do with furniture. The guy didn't expect to sell furniture. He, he didn't do it for that purpose. But if ever there was proof that when you attach values to people, what people care about, their response is they buy what you are saying.